All right, hey guys, what's up? I'm super excited to go over our facility programming, spring cycle, training priorities and goals for you and your gym and how we're gonna help keep your members coming back for more all the time. A uh, couple important dates to kick off. Starting April 8th, next Monday through 13th is our initial testing week that we're gonna be going. We've been on a couple deload weeks after the open right now. Hope get everyone rebalanced and feeling really good. Uh, again, after that, we're gonna be breaking down each of the three week cycles and the priorities of them in here for you. So you'll have that in advance. You can help start putting content together in addition to the content I'll be giving you for your members uh, there. Leading up to week 12, we run in 12 week cycles. June 24th to 29th is our final retesting week. Okay, that's gonna go into obviously deload after that and I'll break it all down. But kicking it off for our testing week and our priorities, the main things we're looking at for this first part of our testing week is gonna be structural balance is a big theme of this cycle anytime we come off of intensification, whether that's just after a single workout, right? You do a really hard, say, benchmark or tester workout, you wanna flip the script and go back to a day of structural balance or a good kind of base building work. Same thing on a larger level, right? After the open, five hard weeks of single, double, some of you, three workouts uh, in a row. I know for every tester, we say we're not gonna do it, but we do it. Uh, there we need a little bit more time to rebuild that. So some of the tests we're going here are going to be absolute strength test, uh, upper body pulling. We're going to be working a lot on weighted pull-ups, strict pull-ups, especially focusing around Murph coming right around here. I feel like a, a weatherman right now. I'm like, we're having a great day here for, for Murph prep. But uh, working on the weighted pull-up in our testing week, especially, and we'll be doing a bunch of strict work after that, in addition to different aerobic and muscle endurance pieces. Uh, for the first few weeks, the accumulation cycle, so from April 8th, 13th through the 27th, that cycle is gonna focus a lot on functional bodybuilding. Our testers will be doing there are eight rep, uh, max split squat, hinging, single arm pressing, left and right. So you're gonna see a lot of unilateral work that you know, might not look like strength work uh, on the surface because we wanna go, hey, where are my sets of fives and threes? but we know that we're generally limited in expressing our power when we have those imbalances and that we can get more out of that from a uh, high time under tension, like I say here, and structural balance is gonna be the right hypertrophy training for members looking to increase some of their one rep maxes later in the cycle when we get down here to the final weeks, 10 to 12, or hitting sets of one to threes to express the power that they've created, and also for people looking for better body composition. Right? And we know that's a big part of the membership wants to look good, feel better, move great. They want to be down that area. So the first couple weeks, you're going to build a lot on that. But that's going to be a big theme going through this entire training cycle for your people. Okay, and we're going to lay it on pretty thick. And what you're going to notice is a couple of the testers we're going to do throughout here by doing more functional bodybuilding, by doing more unilateral training, in addition to all the other parts of training we're doing, strict work, etc., we're throwing some different benchmarks in here. And what I want to be able to help show your members is by going a little bit of a different approach that they're going to get the same results, maybe even better results in the end. And they're going to be feeling better, which means they're going to be coming more and training with you more. So that's the idea. It gives us a little more variation on the conditioning side, even though they're progressive, we're always playing a little bit of sleight of hand uh, there to make sure they're engaged in what they're doing, but we're giving them the right medicine and dose that we know as coaches they really need. Uh, because Murph is a big part of this training cycle here, which actually falls right around here, we know Murph is aerobic muscle endurance, which is going to be great. Uh, actually, for the open, it always it ends up being good because usually we want to go longer, which means we're going to have lower relative intensity, as well as focus on basic body coordination pieces, meaning lots of strict pull-ups, close grip bench press, etc., uh, and improving on our squat endurance is really going to help build up to Murph in addition to the other rather aerobic progressions we're going to be running. So uh, that's the priorities for the first three weeks. Again, think of testers like Karen and Annie are going to be coming up. Pretty basic ones, but high on local muscle endurance, which is what we want building up in this part of the cycle. Functional bodybuilding, structural balance, and high time under tension will be what that focuses on. The next prep cycle, weeks four to six, is going to be a little closer to MRF prep. Okay, what does that mean? It means we're working more on absolute strength and endurance. So now that we've got right and left balanced, it's gonna be things like in sets of five to tens will be where we want for strength and endurance. So not trying to actually do the expression of your strength, but trying to come aboard and now gain one step up from 
say, you know, right, left, high time under tension work, we're now gonna load them up a little more with maybe barbells or sticking with some of the movements that are gonna be still dumbbell, kettlebell uh, pieces, but now for higher output. And yeah, you absolutely can do, it does not ha doesn't happen a lot for whatever reason, but one rep max, you know, half kneeling single arm press, for sure stuff is gonna end up down here. It doesn't have to just be a barbell, but it's gonna help us express better power when we do load them up with a barbell eventually. Okay, longer aerobic, after your hour workout, hopefully you should be able to have your bodies adapted to handle the volume you need to do that, and high muscle endurance. That's great all the time. A lot of our training really should fit around muscle endurance and aerobic and basic skill work. Uh, the last piece I put in here is density. That just means from going, uh, being able to do things like, say, in a Cindy fashion where we're chopping up 5, 10, 15, which is one of our testers in the first week because Cindy works really well for Murph, obviously. Uh, being able to increase the ability there. So now it's sets of 20, 30 in a row versus having to chop up everything small. So when we do that in training, it gives us the ability that now sets of five are relatively easy again, compared to doing sets of 20 or higher rep sets. So that's density in our training. We're looking forward to do with basic skill work though. So we're not doing density of butterfly chest to bar pull-ups for another day. We increase this, that's gonna come with us. And again, I want you to think of the benchmarks we're working for longer aerobic, things like Helen fit really well here. Uh, we did some barbell work in the beginning part with some running, so Grace is gonna come up. So there's a little bit of weightlifting, but lower skill. Their power clean push jerk, I don't consider the highest skill expression of weightlifting there. And again, absolute strength endurance. We transition, we hit up Murph, we go through here. The next part for the three weeks is gonna be more absolute strength. So that means from transitioning from sets of five to 10, we're transitioning now to sets really three to five, some singles in there, absolutely, but we're gonna increase complexity a little bit, even though this is not gonna be a super complex cycle. This is not open prep cycle, this is not gains prep cycle. This is gonna be, again, looking good, feeling better, and training really consistently and making good habits and regular training is the biggest focus of the cycle, okay? Uh, some weightlifting now, again, we did weightlifting in some conditioning pieces here. Some weightlifting for output is gonna be showing up a little more as we work on positional pieces uh, there for everyone and a little higher skill, right? So we say higher skill, so some pieces that are coming up because we finished a relatively low skill training block of Murph prep, but well, it's a great workout because everyone can do it. Maybe not the volume, but the movements become relatively e uh, easy to tailor in our goal-based training system uh, there. So things like Elizabeth, probably for performance, Amanda for sport, and there's a great fitness variation we use for these two. Uh, same thing, Nate. Again, I consider these, Nate and Amanda, are two of the more higher skill benchmarks uh, that we do in testers. And then again, absolute strength limit lifts, meaning what's the limit for a three rep max, not just one reps, et cetera, even though those, those are gonna pop up. Three to fives with some singles there. And the final part, week 10 to 12, now it's gonna be really intensification of that training cycle, getting ready for retesting what we did here April 8th to 13th, you're catching on, you're doing great, right? So that means one to threes, density will come up as we worked on some of those strict weighted pull-ups there. Also things where we're doing the three minute uh, strict pull-up test, it goes max unbroken plus max reps remaining in the remaining time. Same thing with push-ups, things like that will come in. And again, that's density and how we can recover from density based on our aerobic system uh, being developed, which we did. What a whole ton of it right here. So you see how the themes are fitting together. Functional bodybuilding now, where it was on the front end here of the accumulation cycle, is gonna go on to be support. So meaning if I'm working on output of one of our retesters, right? Let's say uh, the workout gusto we have coming up. Three rounds for time, uh, well on paper, 200 meter run, 20 uh, lunges with a dumbbell and 20 single arm push press. And right, so unilateral, uh, work aerobic power. We know people may have one side a little stronger, they're gonna lean on heavier there. So we wanna train the output a little more here. And on the back end of it, you'll see some of the bodybuilding pieces and structural balance work to support that. Where here we're trying to do it to increase their ability, to raise the ceiling, right? To raise that roof. I don't even know why I say that. Uh, and on the back end here, it's gonna be something uh, that we use now to make sure that feels better for them and they're doing good and they're not just, you know, getting good output and then some imbalances, support and balance. Okay, so that's it. That's week 10 to 12 and that testing cycle, June 24th to 29th is coming up. The deload's gonna be two weeks. 
June 30th to 14th. And the reason is uh, a lot of people are gone over the 4th of July holiday. So this makes a great time to do testing if everyone's not in and if I miss this piece. So a two week cycle is good. Also gives us a little more time to have some fun. This is where we do more varied stuff, things that don't come up uh, normally just in a normal sequence of training. It might mean, again, just because it's d -load doesn't mean it's lighter. It might be something super hard. Just what's happening tomorrow is really the approach I want to have a little more there. Uh, there and again with the 4th of July, it helps people. If they're gone, they get back on board pretty easily. Final part, summer cycle runs July 15th. Uh, to start testing week, September 29th to October 5th is testing week. And uh, that's going to be because the fall open starts in October. We don't know exactly when, but I want to make sure we're pretty good uh, there. I have a feeling their open is going to finish right before Thanksgiving. Just my thoughts, but who knows uh, there. They haven't put a date out yet, but just so you know, the summer cycle is coming right there. And if we need to adjust it a week uh, based on that, that'd be fine. But we also know that most people's goal isn't the open. It's look good, feel great, train consistently, 